I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving into an amazing book it's called Rotten to the Core, and it is written by one of my favorite authors, and we're happy to welcome him back to the show. His name is Rob Murphy. This gripping novel that he's written unravels the murky underbelly of international soccer as FIFA Secretary General Francois Picard maneuvers through the shadowy corridors of power to secure the 2018 World Cup for Russia. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us once again here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Rob, great to see you here today on Spotlight. There's the book. It's a great cover. It's a great read. You did wonderful work on that, my friend. Rob, how did you get the idea? How, what was your inspiration to write the book Rotten to the Core? Well, uh, the, the events leading up to you know, the, the, the 2018 World Cup, including the bidding round, were extraordinary, to say the least, Logan. Um, and Go ahead. It, 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 the, often, often with large tournaments, the allegations are made that there's, uh, you know, there's bribery and corruption involved. It's happened with you know, previous, um, you know, cases with the Olympic Games, previous World Cups, mm. and other, you know, and other major, other major sporting, you know, sporting events that are happening. But, but with this one. Um, the English so Soccer Federation, the, known as the Football Association, were actually considering boycotting the World Cup. Amazing! They, you know, they 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 felt that the you know that uh, that there had been that you know there'd been there'd been corruption that there'd been um you know that there'd been de backroom deals done, and and they were considering um you know withdrawing you know withdrawing England altogether. And then Amazing. in 2015, the, the then United States Attorney General Loretta Lynch mm -hmm. launched a series of prosecutions against senior uh, against senior soccer officials, including um, including those in FIFA and I think the past Secretary General Sepp Blatter and um, a few officials of the um, America's um, Football Federation, Con you know, Concacaf, and it included I think the United States' own representative. Showing that um, there was there was no bias involved. Now this really this really showed that um, you know there was possibly <laughs> amazing amazing what was going on in the backdrop of the maneuvering. Now both England and Russia were desperate to stage the World Cup. Why is it that Russia succeeded and England did not? Russia is very good. At some, you know, at, you know, at, at, you know at building building good relationships with other with other other countries. you will probably you will probably seen Logan that some that, that at the moment the um, they're getting a lot of support from countries in Africa and elsewhere elsewhere across the third world over their um, in, over their military action in the Ukraine. Hmm. And they and, and in sports they have they they were very effective in winning over you know, winning over emerging you know sort of emerging and developing countries. Um, there is there is I'm afraid you know I'm afraid that England has been less has been less effective. There there are, there are various reasons. There's, there's obviously the legacy of the of the British Empire and several countries that were formerly colonised by the United Kingdom still feel that England treats. You know, you know, you know, treats them as a, you know, as a as a colony rather than as an equal partner. Um, there was there was also the there was also the you know, the you know the aftermath of the Iraq War, and there was some bad feeling about uh, about the United Kingdom, uh, you know, participating and joining the United States in the in the invasion of Iraq. Hmm. And finally, more, more recently, there was the decision, the, the decision taken by the United by the UK to leave the European Union, which has led to some deterioration in relationships between, you know, and certainly England as the dominant partner in the United Kingdom and the rest, and, and, and the rest of Europe. 
Absolutely. A lot of factors in play there, a very complex situation. Francois Picard, of course, was at the heart of it all. And some would say he kind of engineered his own downfall, right? Yes, very much, very much so. He thought, he thought that, um, he thought that, you know, engin engineering, um, you know, engineering a, a, big, a rival bid for the European Foot Soccer Championships in 2016 hmm. would, um, you know, would help, would, would help Russia by um, undermining England's bid, and this was a bid by Scotland and Wales. The only thing was that Picard had made that was supporting a bid against his own country, mm -hmm. and, um, and and then when the, you know what Russia has got when Russia had got the tournament, they more or less said to him, "Sorry, Francois, you're on your own now." And Picard then realizes he's uh, you know he's, he's sunk his own country's own country's bid. So he does everything possible to try and undermine the, the Scotland and Wales um, joint bid for Euro 2016. And it involves it, 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 it involves using his connections with the with, with the European Union and uh, and the French and the French uh, one of the French commissioners to tr when he when he learns that they've used that they've used EU money to you know to build infrastructure. It involves um him using using his connections with a with with a British cabinet minister to try uh, to try and undermine uh, um, undermine the bid, and finally when um, it when when a satirical newspaper published you know Charlie Hebdo, who you may have heard of, um, you know publishes allegations that he you know that you know that, that he received he, he he received money in return for you know for backing you know for backing two corrupt bids. Um, hire, goes and hires an, uh, hires a, a professional assassin to try and take out the lead prose you know, prosecution witness, who was a former employee of the French Football Federation. Absolutely amazing! Amazing. And when the United, when the Department, U.S. Department of Justice finally, you know, finally comes down on him, he turns. He, he, he turns what they call state evidence, mm. and, um, you know, and, 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 and in doing so, uh, ends up with some of the Russian oligarchs having their, their assets in the United States being seized, being frozen, and that, and, and, the, and the, Russians, the Russians are not good losers, Logan. <laughs> As we've, as we've probably seen, and it ends up with you know, one of the oligarchs arranging, you know, arranging, you know, for you know, for Picard to be assassinated, which happens. Amazing, absolutely amazing, and the U.S. government uh, was under pressure also as officials decided whether to prosecute the leading FIFA officials for corruption. Right. Yeah, that's right, Logan, because. Um, it was highlighting it was highlighting the differences of opinion between the Department Department of Justice and and State Department, or more particularly um, the the Attorney General Lorraine Hightower, who was determined to who was determined to crack down on the you know on, you know, on corruption within the in, you know, international within within the international soccer federations and sports in general. Which leads it into conflict with the um, State Department and the and the Secretary of State Oliver Norbury, whose concern is more within the you know, with, within the South you know, Central and South America. He was worried that so if the leading you know, if, if people were national sporting heroes ended up being prosecuted by by the United States, that it would under it, it would turn it would turn those countries it, it could you know, turn those countries against the USA. And it could um, um it, it could affect you know affect the outcome of elections taking place. Mm -hmm. And indeed, in Rock to the Core, I gave the example of Argentina, where um an un where where a, a, an unpopular socialist president who was you know who, who who whose record in government was not very good manages to you know, manages to secure you know sort of victory you know, out, you know sort of out of which was unexpected to say the least, because um, the because Department of Justice were planning to prosecute a former 
a, form, a former member of the Argentine soccer soccer team that have won the World Cup. Mm. Who, and in Argentina, such people are regarded as national heroes. I mean, good examples are like Diego, well, the now deceased uh, Diego Maradona, if you remember him. Yes, yes, amazing. So much to unpack there, so many stories, so much intrigue, all contained within your book. Rob, let me just ask you this. Here we are nearly a decade later, 2024. Are things better with FIFA and the World Cup? Uh, difficult to say, Logan. Yeah. Um, Sepp, Blatter, you know, Sepp Blatter resigned as Secretary, as Secretary General, but the new Secretary General turned out to be, a, I think, a quite a close friend of his who lived only about six kilometres away in, in Switzerland. Amazing. And indeed, in the... In, uh, a memory of the World Cup, which took place in Qatar, to you know, back in twenty twenty two, was when the when the cameras focused on you know Giovanni in Infiniti, in, in Infiniti uh, uh, there was a very loud chorus of booing from the fans. <laughs> they, I don't they don't. see, <laughs> I think they see him as somehow uh, somehow being implicated. Amazing. Well, we call that a Bronx cheer here in the United States when yeah. we boo <laughs> loudly. That's for sure. Yes. The name of the book is Rocky to the Core. It is a gripping book that unravels the murky underbelly of international soccer as FIFA Secretary General Francois Picard maneuvers through the shadowy corridors of power to secure the World Cup for Russia in 2018. And, is, uh, and in receipt, and in receipt of a of a sizable, you know, of a sizable backhander for his, you know, for his efforts. And that is why he that, he thought, I'm in the position, I can, I, I, can, I can do this, and I can get away. Amazing. It's an amazing story. We're glad you put it all in a book. Rob, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Logan, many thanks for having me on Spotlight. My pleasure, my pleasure, my friend. Always good seeing you. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>